So I start the healing ministry with her leave. In, in a two years later, I had the most beautiful four to five hours experience of the ordination of the priesthood. People ask me, how did you get into this ministry that working with priests around the world? It wasn't my idea, but it was the Lord. One morning in my chapel, when I was very critical of the priesthood, because priests were leaving and things were happening, that the Lord showed me in the most beautiful mystical experience, the ordination, what happens to a priest from heaven's side. And that's why I tell people, and I tell the Irish especially, and the Americans where I live. You know, there's nothing wrong with the priesthood of Jesus. It is the, in these men here, they're the vessels, and they carry Jesus. He didn't call them perfect, he didn't call them sinless, he called them because he loved us. He, they had the courage to say, here I am. And they identify very much with Our Lady. Because Our Lady's yes is her greatness. When Mary was prepared, but she said yes, she could not conceive on her own. It was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Trinity. She cooperated by her yes. What these men do, they, he didn't make them a battle, but he called them with all their frailties, their sexuality, their limitations, the flaws of original sin. But he promised that if they would say yes, he would come in his priest, own priesthood, and through their word, the words they say, in word and sacrament, he would make himself present. And that's why people with faith do not have a crisis with who is a priest, because it's not a job, it's not a min, it's not that I could be, I could be prime minister of England. Ireland, just because I'm a woman, but I can't be, I can't dictate to God. And I remember on the Gay Berlin show many years ago, if some of you remember, that was a question, or one of these Terry Wogan shows said to me, why would you like to be a priest after all? Look at all you can do. And I remember it was Terry Gay Burn. I said to Gay, maybe a priest? I said, Gay, who has the right to stand in front of God and say, you give me power. What we reduce the priest to this, this <clears throat> it's a job. None of these men have the right to the priesthood, not even from the top down. God shows them. But he gives us the laity a mission. Because when you have very, very special china in your house, or beautiful things, you treat them differently than you would the mug you drink your coffee with every day, right? Well, you see, what the Lord is saying to us, I give you vocations. I will never take vocations away. But if you keep tearing them apart and destroying them, that's the work of Satan. And that's why I say to the Irish, we have to pray. What has happened when our seminary, all our seminaries are closed, Pre people are giving out because the church, there's nobody to say mass, the churches are closing. Brothers and sisters, and the same in the U.S., it's not God's fault. And it's not their fault because they said yes. Who is it? What are their families? How many people criticize? I know there was harm done. But there's sinners in every group of every people. And the weak reason these men are under ferocious attack from Satan is because he knows the power they have. Satan is out for the destruction of the Catholic Church. He's not worried about all these other ministers. His target is us, Catholics. And the more we flock out of the church or leave the mass, the more Satan is rejoicing. And that's why I encourage you, in your Medjugorje groups, in your prayer, pray for priests, support your priests. And I, I, I listened one day to a, a priest, which I was very sad because he was on, on the radio. And he was talking about how boring the priesthood was. I thought, he can't possibly know Jesus. He can't possibly. And I thought, you know, fathers, when, when I got this vision of the priesthood, I had the most beautiful scene of Jesus transforming you and saying to you, you just love me. Give your life to me. 
and I will show you what I can do through you. Now to finish off, I came, you know I had this prophecy about Medjugorje and it was a month before Medjugorje happened. I don't take any credit for it, I prayed with a priest and he was very distraught here in, in Croatia in Mostar because the youth were leaving the church and the communists were in rain and he begged me at a meeting I was at in the Vatican, a group of these Yugoslavian priests, to pray with them. It was in May 1981. And it was at that moment that I got this vision of a church, I didn't know even where Mostar was, with two white steeples. I saw this priest sitting at an altar and streams of water flowing and the church packed with young people and they're drinking and leaving and coming back. And Father Emile Tardy, French Canadian priest walked over, whispered into the priest's ear that I was speaking to, Our Lady is coming to visit you. That was a month before the apparitions began. Now, I never went to Medjugorje uh, for, for a couple of years. And one day, in front of a picture of Our Lady of Perpetual Heaven, Our Lady spoke to me. And she said, I heard this in my heart, you must go to Medjugorje. There I'm going to give you a message for my priest. Not only for the priest, but for us all, but for, especially the priest. And one of the priests here keeps asking me, what is that message? Well, I really pray, but I'm going to share it now and finish with, and Father Pablo and myself will pray with you for a moment. But this is what I got in Medjugorje. I came to Medjugorje, Father, I think it was Father Purvan was preaching at the Mass in St. James's, before we had the outdoor. And at Mass, I start to cry. And I kept thinking, I don't know where you're saying it's in Croatia. And all of a sudden, behind the altar, I had this vision. And people say, how do you get these? And I tell people, well, you know, I have a great imagination, a great storyteller. But God can anoint it. And I beg Jesus, Lord, let my imagination be used for your kingdom, not for destruction, but to build up. And I don't need to know what priests need. You just let me know what you want them to know. I don't have to know. Well, at this vision, I saw this cloud, thick black, uh, like lava from a volcano, erupting. And it was coming down on village after village, city after city. But then I saw all these priests, and Jesus was saying to them, let me stop it. And I was sitting in the pew, and he's talk, father's up there talking, and I'm saying, please, look, it's happening. They're going to be destroyed. And this thick black ladder kept creeping closer and closer into the dwelling places, into people's lives. And all these priests were there, and Jesus was telling them, tell them, stop, stop it. You have the authority. My authority is in you. And I was pleading 